The Chiricahua Mountains are a land of history, wilderness, and wonder in southeastern Arizona. But like many places, these mountains have been subject to intense pressure from westward expansion, climate change, and unsustainable land use practices. However, there is one watershed in the Chiricahuas that is deviating from this trend and showing evidence of remarkable restoration potential, a place where natural infrastructure and dryland streams are supporting adaptation to and protection from climate-related disturbances and stressors. This is Turkey Creek. Situated on the El Coronado Ranch, and it is an oasis in the Chiricahuas, maintaining water where it had been lost over time using nature-based solutions. Managed by Josiah Austin and Valer Austin Clark from 1982 to 2022, its story has intrigued scientists for decades. I remember the first time that I came here was in February 2013 with a large group of people. And we came through and we were all amazed at the uh, land management that the Austins had done here, where they had created these ponds and swimming pools and bathtubs all up and down the forest lanes where they were harvesting water. And I could only think that the feeling that I got looking at these structures was completely indescribable because it was so powerful, the amount of earth that was being moved and the amount of water that was being harvested. And it was also indescribable related to my professional career because there was no metrics and there was no scientific quantification that described the mechanisms that were happening in the hydrology here. And that made me really excited about creating an experimental laboratory. The extraordinary thing about this watershed is the sheer number of rock detention structures the Austins installed. Dr. Norman and her team were able to capture GPS data on over 2,000 structures, and remarkably, that may be only a fraction of the total. So my husband started building small rock dams to, to harvest the water and to control erosion, and where he did that, we noticed that the grasses came in and they stayed green during the dry season. And when I say a few dams, he built several thousand. We were very lucky where we started putting these loose rock structures here at El Coronado. Uh, you know, I put in one or two to protect a road. After we put it in that area, I noticed that the grass was greener on both sides of this. It was almost like a retention wall. And I thought, well, if it works here, you know, let's put in a few more of them. So I put in a few more and I got instant results. You know, after 20 years, we have 20,000 of these loose rock structures. If somebody had come to me and said, you know, Joe Austin, what you need to do is put in 20,000 loose rock structures, I would say, you're crazy. There is no other watershed in the United States that boasts this sheer number of structures making it the perfect location to conduct studies on their impacts. And, by comparing the data collected from an adjacent watershed, Rock Creek, where there are no check dams installed, the USGS was able to establish a paired watershed experiment to draw and compare quantifiable insights about how the water behaves and how the land responds in the presence and absence of rock detention structures. Using existing weather gauges to monitor rainfall or the input of water into the watersheds, the USGS established modified continuous slope area gauges in both streams to capture high-resolution data on how high the water rose and how fast it receded after a rain event. Continuously recording pressure transducers, crest stage gauges, and direct measurements of stream flow were used to develop stage discharge relationships, while GPS surveys, terrestrial LIDAR, and three-dimensional models refined their knowledge of water yield and sediment loads over time. Additionally, soils were sampled to analyze their organic material using isotope analysis. Now I'm standing in the Turkey Pen subwatershed. Uh, this is uh, one of the tributaries of the Turkey Creek that we were just looking at. And this is one of the uh, areas that the Austins had invested a lot of effort into slowing the water down. You can see here, these are small rock check dams that they put into this watershed. The water here is running pretty slowly. If you look down, you can see it's also uh, very clear. So they're not very tall. 
um, but they stretch across the width of the channel. We don't see much incision here and very little exposed bedrock. Okay, now we're standing over in Rock Creek. This is the watershed that's uh, just adjacent to the Turkey Pen watershed. You can see the water flowing here is flowing a little bit faster and it is flowing over rock. There's a lot of uh, exposed bedrock here. The water flows through deep channels with large boulders and it flows much more rapidly and with higher turbidity. This is our control site in the paired watershed experiment that we did at El Coronado Ranch. The results were in, and the data confirmed Dr. Norman's suspicions of the benefits of rock detention structures. The first result of the hydrologic discharge analysis showed the watershed treated with rock detention structures having a 50% reduced average rate of flow, mainly during flash flood events. In addition, the check dams were found to be extending the timing of summer base flows in the treated watershed by three to four weeks. The result that was maybe the most shocking was that there was 28% more water flowing downstream in the treated watershed when compared to the control watershed of Rock Creek. This goes against conventionally held beliefs that bare bedrock transports more water downstream. What the evidence portrays instead is that these rock detention structures are allowing more water to be kept in the system. Dr. Norman's team hypothesized that the check dams were creating perched water tables above bedrock. A calibrated soil and water model was applied to estimate the total soil stored by check dams throughout the watershed, and it found that they stored a little more than 200 tons per year. This erosion control around the check dams keeps the sediment out of the stream and increases downstream water quality. The results of the soil isotope analysis depicted the potential rate of carbon capture for rock detention structures at between 200 and 250 metric tons per hectare, which is equivalent to what is stored in coastal wetlands. All of these rock detention structures are detaining the water. They're capturing the soil. They're capturing what's proven to be very rich, nutrient-rich soil. They're sequestering carbon, and they're allowing the water to stand still in these dirt sponges long enough so that the vegetation is able to take hold. And then the, the vegetation then acts on the same cycle, helping to delay the water and keep the sediment in place. The USGS team's scientific approach to gathering data was able to verify the ecohydrologic benefits provided by restoring the landscape with rock detention structures. The data showed that these structures bring much needed water back into ecosystems, store carbon and sediment on par with coastal wetlands, support riparian habitat, reduce erosion, sediment yield, and flow intensity, and keep water in dryland streams longer than watersheds not treated with rock detention structures. This installation of and research on rock detention structures in the Turkey Pen watershed introduces low-tech and low-cost climate mitigation and adaptation strategies, paving the way for us to use natural infrastructure as a nature-based solution here in the Chiricahua Mountains and beyond. If you are interested in learning more, you can find links to the papers published from this research and other resources mentioned throughout the video in the video's description section.